Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video and in this video we're going to be taking a first look at the Whisperer War event which is the next event that is going to be coming to Road to Survival. And as it says on the screen, the Whisperer War, a Whisperer War is upon us, however this won't be your conventional war experience. The Whisperers are notorious for their guerrilla tactics, striking fast and hard in a series of coordinated and timed raids, before disappearing without a trace. Your team will have to adopt these tactics themselves in order to be victorious, striking in coordinated raids with your strongest teams and using your backup forces to hunt down the stragglers and recover any valuables they might be carrying. Time for your benched characters to shine. The event dates are as follows, it starts on Tuesday the 11th of August at 12pm Pacific Time and it ends on Tuesday the 18th of August at 12pm Pacific Time. The event overview is as follows, to coordinate your attack, raiding during specific time slots during the day will grant you Broken Whisperer Masks as a guaranteed raid drop. The raid times each day will be as follows, a 3 hour period between 12pm and 3pm Pacific Time a 3 hour period between 8 p.m. and 11 p.m. Pacific time and a 3 hour period between 4 a.m. and 7 a.m. Pacific time. It goes on to say be sure to focus on those specific times as broken whisperer masks will only drop as raid rewards during the specific times. Collecting broken whisperer masks will make you progress in the main mission event. Each milestone will reward you with some anniversary banners along with world and raid energy refills. The broken whisperer masks will allow you to run the whisperer war roadmap an old school roadmap limited to 5 star characters and below. The roadmap will reset each day and offer gold rings as an act and stage reward on the first completion. Stages can also be replayed in order to collect gold arrows which will drop during stages. Once you've collected sufficient gold arrows and gold rings you'll be able to trade them in the black market for S class choice boxes, weapons and other useful items. The main mission event will be as follows and you will need to collect a broken whisperer mask during the specific raid times that were listed above to do so. You need to collect 250 whisperer masks and you will get 3 raid refills and then secondary rewards are anniversary banners and 3 world refills. So it does look like you get quite a lot of rewards per sort of milestone segment. The next one will be 500 then 750 then 1000 and each one rewards different amounts of raid energy, anniversary banners and world energy refills. It did of course talk about a whisper reward roadmap that could only be used for 5 stars and below. Collected broken whisperer masks will be used as the energy for this whisper reward roadmap. This is an old school roadmap limited to 5 star characters and below. The roadmap will reset daily and you'll be able to claim the act and stage rewards of gold rings once per day repeat stages to collect gold arrows. The roadmap details are as follows, it has one act with four stages, refreshes once per day and the difficulty is between S4 and S5, characters allowed 5 star characters or below, energy cost is 6 broken whisperer masks per stage, 24 total and the act of rewards is 4 golden rings, stage rewards are also 2 golden rings, first completion only, total 8. So that means for every reset you will be able to get 12 golden rings per reset and then the stage drops will be the arrows and that's down to you farming. Now it did say the Whisperer masks were a guaranteed drop while raiding in no specific time slots so you would need to raid obviously 24 times minimum to be able to get the amount of Whisperer masks you have required to complete this roadmap. However, there could be more than one Whisperer mask dropping at a time in raids but the minimum should be one of course if it is guaranteed. Now there are some hand-ins on the black market and you'll be able to trade your earned gold rings and gold arrows for several rewards. The gold arrow trade-ins are as follows and the gold arrows are acquirable by farming the stages. There is a shiny desert eagle as the top reward. It costs 12,500 gold arrows and the stock is limited to one. And this is what the shiny desert eagle looks like. It is going to be a five-star weapon off the get-go. It gives 35% HP. A huge bonus to AP when taking damage, focus stun when being attacked, a better chance to stun the enemy and get focus for two turns. And it has a four slot special as well, which is alert buffs. At the start of each turn, all other teammates get 10% defense for one turn for each alert teammate on the team. This is 
a really good weapon to just put into Pete's hands straight away and just upgrade the HP to 50%. You are going to get those three upgrades that you can just put anywhere. But this weapon is pretty much done. You could potentially go for a second stat instead of the huge bonus to AP when taking damage and make this like a, a shield weapon if an alert shield ever comes out. Or you could make it AP on attack for a certain other character, maybe Minerva, for instance, AP on attack and 45% HP would work pretty well for her. The weapon is nice, however, the third and fourth slot work very well together on defense teams, especially if you are stacking a couple of alert characters together, because that buff would just get stronger and stronger the more alert characters you have. So overall, pretty decent weapon and could definitely be worth farming that roadmap to get the required golden arrows. There are also some other rewards available with the gold arrows. There is an S-Class choice box with 200 cards of selected characters. You can get this up to 10 times for 700 gold arrows each. 1,000 army tokens for 200 gold arrows does seem a bit pricey compared to, let's say, the S-Class choice box, for instance. And then we have varnish, engine grease, blow torches, and other items that you can trade in. Some of these are only limited to ones. Some of them are limited to up to 50, so there will be some nice little bits, you know, that you can claim. There is a free claim for Survivors Club members, and the cost is free, and you'll be able to claim 2,000 gold arrows for during the event. Then we go on to the gold ring trade-ins, and this is from the actual map completion and stage completion. I think I calculated there's only a maximum of 12 per day that you can get from this, and if it is a 7-day event, you're looking at around about 84 of these you can acquire from just completing that roadmap every day. The S-Class choice box is as follows, 300 of Alpha Storm, carry -on, or Trader cards, and it will cost 75 gold rings, and that's the majority of your gold rings from the roadmap. The stock is 20 here, so obviously you will be able to purchase more gold rings, no surprise there. 5,000 armory tokens for 20 gold rings, and then again it goes through the other items varnish engine grease blowtorch 75 gold rings will be available if you are a survivors club member and that does mean you'll be able to claim that top crate for free straight away as a survivors club member and get yourself a 300 choice crate instantly if that's something that you want to claim so as anticipated with the whisperer event it is just mainly going to be a filler event and just to stock up here and there on stuff if you do want to purchase some of the gold rings it does seem like you'll be able to get quite a reasonable amount of the character shards in those choice crates just remember it is 75 of those gold rings per claim and then you just have to work out if it is worth it for the 300 at a time but do tell me what you think about the whisperer war event would you prefer to see a more extensive whisperer event i think this is quite a low-key one I'm not 100% sure on the specific raid times just yet, and I hope it is advertised in-game just to make it a bit easier for people. We'll have to see how this pans out, but I do hope we get an extended Whisperer event in the future. I like the House of Cards conundrum sort of style events, but having it surrounding the Whisperers, obviously a topic within The Walking Dead that a lot of people know about and a lot of people like, of course, would be great for a multi-week event and definitely for a character to be available that is sort of like a whisperer character yes please do give me your thoughts on the whisperer war event that is in my video thank you very much for tuning in and as always keep on surviving guys keep on surviving